Hello, and welcome to 2-6. Today we're going to be talking about partial products multiplication to try to help make uh, large multiplication a little bit easier. So here I have a little um, example of the distributive property. So if I were to have 6 times 8, now I've seen a lot of you do this in Alex Math, so you should have a little bit of background knowledge. I can break 8 into 5 plus 3 because I know that 6 times 5 is 30 and 6 times 3 is 18. That's a lot easier to me to figure out than 6 times 8, maybe. Um, and so then 30 plus 18 is 48. So it's kind of breaking up 8 into two easier numbers of 5 and 3. Okay, so let's give it a shot. Darnell has his four and his four friends went to an ice skating rink and bought sandwiches. They divided the total cost and found that each person needs to pay $17. What was the total cost for ice skating and sandwiches? Okay, so here we have 17, and I, I think it's a lot easier to break it up to 10 plus 7. So we're going to label the model to find the partial, partial products. Um, so I have 5 on this side. This is kind of looking like an area, right? If this was a rectangle, in order to find the area, I multiply the width and the length. Okay, so if I do 5 times 10, I know that's 50. And 5 times 7 is 35. Okay, so then if I add 50 plus 35, that's a lot easier to add. Look at that, 85. Boom. Now, 5 times 17, I, it would probably take me a little while to do it in my head. I could count by 5 17 times. Um, or, this is kind of using the distributive property, using an area model, to do that. So the total cost of the skating and sandwiches was $85. Don't forget your label. So here we go. When we use partial products, you are using a property. A property is a rule in mathematics that can be applied to all numbers, right? Sometimes you guys will find patterns or rules, but it only works for a specific problem. A property is something that can be used for every single number, every single situation, because it runs true for all numbers. The property that you applied above is called the distributive property, and we're going to learn more about this in the next lesson. So, let's try another problem. Find 7 times 56. So, I, I know that 7 times 50 is pretty easy to find because I only need to multiply 7 times 5, which is 35, and then I add my 0 in. Okay, so uh, 7 times 50 is 350. Um, and then I'm going to be doing 7 times 6 because I'm looking at 50. Oops, so why did I write a 7? 6. Because I'm looking at, I have 50 here and 6, and 50 plus 6 makes 56. Okay, and so then I'm multiplying 7 times 50, and 7 times 6 is 42. And then if I need to do 350 plus 42, I know that's 392. Just looking at those numbers, I can add them much easier than if I was going to try to find 7 times 56. So 7 times 56 is 392. If I was going to input the numbers into my area model, I would be doing 7 times 50 plus 7 times 6. I have to multiply both, both numbers by 7. That's what the distributive property says, is if I'm multiplying 7 times 56, I need to, to do it to both the 50 and the 6. Multiply 7 to both the 50 and the 6. All right, let's try one more problem here. So find 6 times 36 using partial products. Okay, so I'm going to do 6 times 30 plus 6. So I'm going to do 6 times 30. Plus 6 times 6. I know what 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times 3 is 18. Add the 0, 180. 180 plus 36 is 216. Okay. Oops, I better do fill in my 6 times 6 over here. All right, and that is all that I have for you today. Um, we'll practice this some more tomorrow, so thanks for watching.